Hi guys, my name is Annabelle from Horizon Cosplay and six weeks ago I made this dress. Now, when I was making this dress, I do recall saying something along the lines of I am debating making a petticoat for this, I don't think I'm gonna have time or that it's actually gonna happen, but you know what? I can dream. And ever since then I just haven't been able to stop thinking about how much this dress I think definitely needs a petticoat. Don't get me wrong, it's really comfy to use on its own and to be fair I have a vintage like silky linen, I don't even know what it is, slip that I do like to wear underneath it which does work very well but I still have the lining from these curtains and I'd really like to use them up to make them part of the same outfit and the only way I can think to do that is by turning them into a petticoat and with that idea in mind I went searching on Google and I found this image from 1910 this is actually a sewing pattern and I have managed to get a picture of kind of what the pattern pieces look like and so I figured I would try and recreate it so I started cutting to make this petticoat I'm actually using the lining of the curtains I originally made the dress from there's still a little left but I am so excited to have it all made out of the same curtain set. It just makes me feel like everything matches. Also if you guys want to make either the 1910 dress or this petticoat please do join my discord. The link is in the description below and I will be bringing out both of these patterns in multiple sizes and fully graded and the discord is going to be the first place when I announce when they're finally all ready. Okay guys, so I have all of the supplies for my 1910 petticoat. I found this awesome lace in amongst some stuff. I, we are organizing a stash swap. Yeah, just knock it into the chair, why don't you? We're actually organizing a stash swap at the moment. And so when I was rummaging around to find some stuff to post to my stash swap partner, I found this lovely cream lace, which goes so well with the kind of off-white lining of the curtains. I was actually debating this the other day. I'm pretty sure the curtain lining isn't supposed to be off-white. It just is because, you know, they're old curtains and such is life. They have gone through the wash, so don't worry, they are definitely clean. And I've also found this old vintage thread that I got out of something from somewhere. And because this is also old, it is also off-white and matches this nearly perfectly. And the last thing that I have to show off right now is this cute little needle book, which we are gonna use the needles inside it for the project, but Ben brought me this the other day and I'm not sure how old it is but definitely at least 50 years according to the shop we got it from and there is a lot of needles in there most of them original I did put a few extra ones I had floating around so I'm very excited to be using that and now the first thing I'm going to do is run a gathering stitch along all the pieces of the petticoat so that we can gather them all together and pin them up in one hit the vintage thread was really nice and honestly a little thicker than a lot of stuff I normally use. But I can't see that being a bad thing as if I wear this petticoat as much as I'm currently wearing this dress it's going to be a well used and well loved item and can probably do with the extra strength thicker thread gives it. Once the bobbin was wound and the machine threaded I realised that the fabric was pretty wrinkled from being folded up and left on my shelf for a week or so before this so out came the iron and we got to steaming it smooth. A process I find overly satisfying. Until that was I got to the bottom panel where I discovered I had pieced the ends together because I'd run out of fabric. So I ironed where the seams needed to be sewn together and then gave it a stitch to attach them. Overlocking it too of course because as we well know I do love my sealed seams and then went back to ironing the main panel. Then I realised that before doing the ruffles I should pin up the bottom hem of the bottom piece so that I could sew it down first to make my life a lot easier. And for the top piece I rolled the back edges over and pinned them in place too. This was all top stitched down which honestly took a little bit bit longer than I would have liked but it did come out nice and neat so it was 110% worth it. Okay so that is all the hems rolled which means we can actually get on with doing our ruffling stitch thank god because it has been way too long but I figured it'd be easier if I just you know did these now rather than wait till it's all ruffled and I have loads and loads of fabric to work with so um yay progress! Finally, I ran a gathering stitch along the top edge of each of these three pieces. Then it was on to some pinning. I decided to start from the bottom and gathered the skirt to the middle strip of fabric. Then that got a stitch and an overlock with the thread breaking several times because of course it did. Next was to pin the two bottom layers to the top of the skirt. I got about halfway through this before realizing I'd pinned it on wrong side facing right side. So had to undo all of that work and start again from the beginning. Once that was all redone, it all got stitched down too. And now we could finally see what the petticoat was going to look like. Okay, so I can hear several of you thinking that I've made this petticoat way too short. However, if you watch the video where I make my 1910 dress, you will notice that I intentionally make the front shorter than I do the back. And mostly that's just because of practical reasons. And because of that, this petticoat isn't the traditional length that a 1910 petticoat would be. I have adjusted it to be longer in the back and shorter in the front to account for the dress, shall we say? So it isn't gonna be even all the way round. So, 
you know, stop panicking. Also because I kind of forgot that I'd done that with my dress. Hold the petticoat up to me and utterly, uh, yeah, panicked would be the word. <laughs> But you know what? Sometimes that's just life. And honestly, I'm really happy with how it's coming out. But I love this fabric. It moves so, so nicely because obviously it was made at Liberty. So of course they're gonna use good stuff. But now we need to actually make this wearable, which means attaching the waistband. To attach the waistband, I began by ironing it in half, then pinning it to the top of the skirt, gathering the skirt down to it as I went. This was then stitched, and because I was wanting to finish this today and no one was going to see it, I for once didn't overlock the edges. So I pinned up the waistband's inside edge. Before starting on the hand stitching, I pinned and then stitched up the back, but only the bottom two sections. And this I did overlock. Why? Well, because it's a back seam and I will definitely be sitting on it fairly continuously, so it's gonna get a lot of wear and tear. So that is one back seam all sewn up and we actually have a skirt, which is amazing. Next thing on the list is going to be to hand stitch the waistband because I don't really want visible top stitching on the outside. I don't know, I just don't think it looks very neat. I'm probably gonna have to put some kind of top stitching because the elastic that I wanna put in the waistband is a little bit too thin for it, but we'll just draw that bridge when we get there. And until then, let's get on with this with my cute little needle book, which by the way, like some of these needles in here are absolutely ginormous. What is this even for? It's massive. Look what she said. Let's get on with it, shall we? Thankfully, while hand stitching the waistband, I had some good costume videos to watch. And if you too like watching good costume videos, please do subscribe for all kinds of cosplay, history bounding, and vintage sewing machine content. Also, for the next two days, my fingers really, really hurt after this, and it's only now while editing that I've realized this is because I was an idiot and did not wear a thimble, which was a very, very bad life choice on my part. Next, I stitched along the waistband to create a channel the right size for the elastic. Oh, and the reason I wanted an elastic and not a fitted waistband like the picture shows is just in case I fluctuate in weight a little bit. After all, whether I lose it or gain it, I spent a lot of time making this and I want it to fit for the longest amount of time possible. I then attached the bobby pin to the elastic and passed it through the channel before putting the petticoat on and adjusting the elastic to fit me comfortably. Then I pinned it into place. To permanently secure the elastic, I top stitched the ends of the elastic just inside of the fabric waistband before hand stitching the ends of the fabric waistband closed to hide the raw elastic. After that, it was time to attach the hook and eyes. I put two on the overlapped edge and one on the center inside for maximum security. I also feel the need to mention that these are vintage hook and eyes I'm using and I just love using vintage sewing supplies in my history banding projects just because, I don't know, it just kind of feels a little bit more authentic, even though these sewing supplies I'm pretty sure are from like the 50s and definitely not from 1910, but what can you do? I like them all the same. <sighs> Good morning, and today we have a petticoat. And really I could actually leave it like this and call it done, but I'm a bit of a perfectionist and I like lace. So we're gonna add some lace around the bottom and because I'm a pain in the ass perfectionist who likes things to be done properly, I'm gonna hand stitch it because reasons. <laughs> so I suppose we should uh, settle down, put some YouTube TV on and yeah, get sewing. Yay! Last thing. I began by pinning on the lace to check I had enough to go around the entire hem of the skirt. Once that was done, I threaded up my needle and put on my thimble before getting going. This took several hours and a lot of tea to complete, but you guys need to appreciate how neat these stitches are. I mean, just look at them. Look at them. They're beautiful, I tell you. And now that that's all done, it's time for the grand reveal. My main thoughts about this petticoat is that it is awesome! The shape and flow of it is just what I wanted and the whole look is absolutely perfect. I also love the look of the lace. To be honest, I've been a bit 50-50 about adding it, but though it doesn't give any extra shape, it just looks so, so nice. I cannot regret the extra hours that it took me to put it on. This petticoat just had the most beautiful movement and it makes my Edwardian dress look even better. Also, for comparison, this is what my Edwardian dress looks like when I'm just wearing my normal slip. Which one do you prefer? Personally, I think in summer I might continue to wear the slip just because the petticoat as it's made of 100% cotton it feels like it could be quite warm but that is never a bad thing while living in the lovely tropical paradise known as the UK where it rains 300 out of 365 days a year yeah I need to move check this out guys <laughs> no but seriously I love this petticoat it gives the dress so much a better shape it moves absolutely gorgeously I am 110% gonna be using this for my cosplays and other history bounds as well. And I love the fact that I now have an outfit made out of both the outside and the lining of the same curtain. Like, perfect. <laughs> Overall, I'm incredibly happy with how this project turned out. And I'm also incredibly happy to announce that both the patterns for my dress and the petticoat will be coming out in multiple sizes. If you do want to stay up to date with that, we have a Discord, link is in the description below, and do join in. 
especially if you want to, you know, gossip about history bounding, cosplay, vintage sewing machines, pretty much anything you can nerd out about, we're going to be nerding out about it on there, so uh, join in, please. <laughs> Otherwise, guys, if you did enjoy this video, do please drop it a like, and if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I post new videos every single Wednesday, so do remember to subscribe so that you don't miss any, and otherwise, until then, have a beautiful day. Bye!